Mekrinorina Polyphemus, it's time to check the um, development of larvae. As you can see in this 65 liter box, where there were around 30 L1, L2, L3 larvae four months ago, the material uh, has gone down to around half of the box, so it, it's a little compressed by the, by the feeding process of the larvae, so let's see. Uh, in what shape they are and whether we should put them singly into 500 milliliter plastic boxes for pupation process as I said already in other videos this is a very nice method to check the development of the larvae from outside so that you don't have in a box like this where you don't see what is actually going on uh, inside so let's have a look and I mean after four months that's a good time to go and see what happened if you if you have a look from 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 top of the box also here you can see it's quite normal that they dig these tunnels uh, that from time to time they seem to come up to the surface and to search for some food that they can eat also what you can see of course is whether there are some food pellets here, also you have seen some something move, so that must be a larva that is near the surface of the substrate. And it is, of course, a larva that is a nice one on the top, practically, of the substrate. So let's see um, what we can do for them. This is not too big, but probably it's a, can be a female. I think it's a female. And it's 21.6 gram. That's not uh, too big. So I put them into a little box like this. Probably you can put some original material on it. But the original material here seems to be a bit more eaten up than with the other larvae from Torquata, Immaculicolis, I that I checked just before. So let's see whether we find larvae in here. Yeah, I've seen a lot of them already. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> so you see them here and of course you already see them here maybe we'll try to take them out and present them to you here on this earthy material before this material was like this one it was a mixture of leaves and earth but now as you can see here they um, produced another kind of material with the leaves, so they have eaten it up, chewed it up, and if it's dry enough, they produce very compact uh, frass pellets. So now they seem a little bit bigger than the other one, and this now is a typical male. Uh, well, you can see there's a little, a little spot here. Uh, where you can see that some uh, male. This is not always as easy to see as it is here, but that's a clear sign that it's a male. So also this one, I put them in a box with a little bit more of the leafy material. Oh, I didn't check the weight of it. This is 27.4 grams. So, and same I do with the others. 28.6 so in a 500 milliliter box like this, you don't have to have um, you don't have to think that it's too small for a larva like this to pupate here, because the diameter of the box is big enough to produce even a big uh, pupal chamber for them. But of course, we have to go back and check the larvas in around one month whether they need some more fresh food or not. As you can see. They are pretty big and nice larvas here in the substrate and the material is practically eaten up but because it's a little bit too wet you don't see too many of the, of the frass pellets because they stick together better when the substrate is wet if it's a little bit um, wet they can stick together so well and they fall apart whenever they are touched by a larva when, when uh, uh, crawling by. So, 
now here, but this is a perfect earth for your garden, and it's a, it's a perfect way of making a good compost, because also we found out at the University of Applied Sciences in Zurich that uh, the larvae produce uh, nitrogen in the substrate, not the larvae themselves, but the microorganisms that live inside of the digestive tract of this larvae. They enrich the substrate with uh, nitrogen. That's kind of a fertile producing of fertilizer that they do in that substrate, and that's why we're making uh, a scientific research program uh, with this kind of larvae too. So let's see if there are a lot more here. I have to change first. I put away some of this material here. Um, of course, I have to be sure that that there is not a, a larva in here, so I have to. Yeah, that's good. So now I think we just can turn it over and then go through the whole rest of the material and see what is in here. So. Now, as you can see, there's a lot going on in here, and the deeper you dig in all of these boxes, the bigger they seem to get, so um, it's incredible how big they are and how heavy they uh, they are in this uh, material. So these are around 30, yeah, these 29, so they are all around 30, or a little bit more grams now. And I do the same with them, I put them singly in a box and they quickly dive down and you can if you want put a little bit more of the original substrate on them and of course it's nice if you add some more uh, of these rotten leaves to the substrate that's what they really like and that's always a nice also a nice method to um, use old leaves if you if you could make a process like this in Africa, where they come from the larvae, so you could produce not only uh, edible insects, because they are eaten in some places in Africa, but you can also produce a very nice and nitrogen enriched substrate for your vegetable growing. That is also an idea that we are trying to make into a scientific uh, research process. Look at how many there are here. So in this box it doesn't seem that that we lost uh, a lot of these individuals. It's in, I think they are 5 here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, probably. Yeah, if we lose some that's not a big problem, but if we lose more than half of them that could be a sign that something and the breeding setting is not okay. Either there are too many of them in a too small box, or there's not enough um, food for them. But as you can see, uh, they have developed very well here. They are fat and big and look healthy with no mites on the spiracles. Just a fantastic uh, beetle for breeding and also it's an easy one to start breeding look they are down here already so i have so many here i have to go very carefully through the substrate not to throw the substrate away with some larvae in there and of course you have to prepare for a breeding process by organizing the material before you start breeding. Because if you think in the moment you need rotten leaves and the material in the second you want to change them, it's probably too late to collect it outside. Like now in fall, it's just a time here in Switzerland before the leaves uh, fall and then at this time you have to collect the old leaves on the ground because they are then pre-rotten and that's the perfect thing for this kind of uh, beetles. If they are fresh, the leaves, they are not uh, very well suited for the breeding process because they have a lot of things in it that 
must be washed out and processed by other microorganisms before the larvae can, can uh, eat them. So, look at this nice larvae we find here. So, that's it. I hope that uh, we can come back and and show you uh, some pupas then when we check the larvas larvae again in one month. Uh, but I think there's some more here down. Yeah, looks not yet finished. <laughs> so uh, I think we have we didn't uh, we didn't lose a lot of them here. Also, I must say that. Body famous confluence is very easy to breed, um, probably the easiest to breed. Rose cheddar from Greek, rose cheddar from Africa. So if you want to start something like this, try this Mechonorina polyphemus.